So glad you could come out. We do have the chat window open and the Q&A should be open as well. Um, just for some housekeeping duties, if you want to put your questions in the chat or the Q&A window, we will, as usual, we will try to um, address them if it's on topic at the time it comes up. If not, we'll stay on for a few minutes after if anybody has any questions and um, just we'll try and keep up if it's relevant. So once I've done the introductions and introduced our guests, um, more than happy to try and manage the Q&A comments as they come in. So we'll just get started in, a, in another 30 seconds to a minute here. Assuming my clock is right, yeah. Okay, it's 2.01. Uh, we'll probably have a few late joiners. We had a record number of people register, so um, maybe they're just late coming back after their late Eastern lunch. Hello, everyone. My name is Rob Johnston. I work for Planetar based out of Waterloo, Ontario. Welcome to another masterclass, uh, kind of an educational series that's designed for the bulk of our users. Um, we kind of do these every two weeks. Our normal hosts are, are off again this, this session, but we'll be returning next week. Um, I'm going to be joined by a few special people. I'll introdu introduce those in a second. Um, I'm going to just start off with a kind of a three to four minute introduction to why DWG files now, um, some things that we've been doing, and um, just get jump into a and right into a PowerPoint presentation. So um, we are going to have two other presenters. If you guys want to stay with your video cameras on until I've gone through my little thing, that would be great. And um, I'm going to just share my screen. We'll get started. So. Can you hope, can you just tell me when you can see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Excellent. Okay, let's get into it. Because you don't want to listen to me, you want to listen to the experts. Uh, again, this is a master class presented by Planetar, um, and it's all about DWGs. This is our second one on DWGs because we've made, are making some changes and we've got some exciting new things for you we're going to show you today. And we've got a, an, uh, some guest presenters that are going to present some really cool things about DWGs. And I'll explain uh, a little bit of that as we go through. Um, again, I'd like to just shout out a couple of welcomes. Uh, and I'd like to welcome Alistair Jeffries, who works for Mass Information Systems based out of the UK. He's a reseller and distribution partner for iGUIDE Systems in the UK. So uh, welcome, Alistair. Uh, I'd like also like to welcome Manu, Manu Sharma out of India, a company called InSpace. They're our distribution and reseller partner in India, and uh, both of them are now um, reselling and, and supporting our products, so I'm glad they could join us. And uh, Philip, I'm going to do a little bit more of an introduction to Philip in a second, but we have a guest presenter today from outside of Planetar uh, who works for Chief Architect. And we'll let him introduce himself and you know, when just before his presentation. But thanks to our guests, we really appreciate it. Today's topic is all about DWGs um, and some things we've learned and put into the product over the last six to eight months, and some things we're we're bringing out for you. And DWGs have many applications, and you know we could probably spend days or weeks on all the different ways people use it. We're focusing on our kind of role in this, which is um property as built conditions so a lot of times there are um we scan a property you need an as built condition for the sake of um a variety of reasons we'll highlight those as we go through the presentation so our focus is obviously using our planetar technology in order to uh, capture the as built and then provide a drawing of that as built condition so i just wanted to set the framework I know we have a lot of people that might be from our real estate photography vertical or insurance vertical. DWGs may be new. Think of DWGs as an exchange format, kind of like the way we can print something to a PDF file. You can save a CAD file in a particular format. That's all a DWG is, is a particular file format. 
So uh, moving on, um, we're going to kind of set up our presenters and get started. Um, the DWG place uh, product placement in the design, build, and remodeling sectors. So when you're going to do a remodel uh, of a home, you want to design something new for a new space. Um, what we're going to do, sorry, I have somebody texting me. Um, there we go. So we're going to be talking about DWGs in regards to remodeling. So you often go out and get a drawing and then you take that as built condition and you model something new. So today we're going to go through, I'm going to go through some of the changes in survey and in stitch. Uh, some of the things we're setting up um, in terms of the product for future. Hope from our drafting team in uh, Waterloo, Ontario. Hope's going to go through all of the different output options from iGUIDE as they pertain to some DWG and some other formats and some new things we've added to the DWG files. And then again, we've got Philip joining us from Chief Architect and we really appreciate it. Chief Ar uh, Philip's gonna give us a really good overview of Chief, Ar Chief Architect and how they can consume our DWG files as the as-built conditions and then uh, move that into a re remodel and then producing um, those kind of drawings that you need for these projects. So there's a kind of a, a real flow here of capture, setting it up, creating existing, creating new design and drawings. But then we typically have to take those uh, new and existing conditions. And that's what we're going to propose to our clients. That's what they're going to agree on as part of the remodeling process. But you also use this information for going for permits. So we just kind of wanted to set the stage of here's why we're talking about DWG files and here's how they're used in this construction and remodeling space. So quickly moving on, I'm going to then talk about survey and stitch. So for any operators that are out there today, uh, you should have updated your, your survey application now. It's free firmware available on our website. And the reason this pertains to it is just creating a better survey, a better alignment that um, you can get better better data from, more organized on the uh, when you get to the back end. So that's something that everyone should be aware of. And if you don't know how to get that, reach out to our support channel and they can help you. But a very basic thing you should be doing just as you're capturing the property, make sure you're running the latest software. And there are some cool new tools in that for capturing spaces and telling you when, when an alignment isn't good when you should go back and delete it maybe and refresh it and do it again. Uh, we, we're about to come out with a, before the end of the year, a, a new version of Stitch. And it's got some really cool new features in it that I'm going to demonstrate today that uh, are going to be setting us up and setting up for Hope's DWG stuff that she's going to show as well. Um, and Stitch is used once we've finished capturing a property to compile it all together and communicate to drafting what we want done on that property. So I'm just quickly going to show you we've added some new reference line features, a new floor overlay feature, and locking alignment. And then I'll pass that off. So just bear with me. I'm going to switch over to my Stitch. Um, if you haven't used it, it's, pr it's probably because you capture easy properties and don't have to use it and upload right away. But this is our product where once we've captured the property, we go into Stitch and compile it ready for uploading to an iGUIDE. And um, I can see there's a bunch of chat questions in there already, but I'll uh, come to those once I've done my presentation. You can see a couple of the new features already. We're, we're now putting reference lines into Stitch that will help you align walls from floor to floor. So it's just a visual indicator that we've added to the product where you can draw lines now for aligning your property and using as reference lines. So it's it's pretty easy. You can just draw horizontal, vertical lines, angle lines to help you align the property the way you want from kind of step one. The big change that's coming is our ability now to set underlays. So this is really important as we get into multi-floor properties. We can now go into like, let's say the second floor and go and say, I wanna use the main floor as my underlay. And when I do that, you can see, I can see my, my first prop, my first scan kind of in the background with my reference lines there that just kind of help me uh, when I need to align my second floor to my first floor. And there's obviously a variety of ways to do that, whether it be uh, through a stairwell, through brick to brick, through load bearing walls, 
you know, I'm not here to tell you the right way. Everyone's got their own methodologies of how they want their, their floors to align. We're just giving you some new tools in Stitch for creating reference lines and being able to see that first floor uh, under on top of the or underneath the second floor. So that's kind of an exciting thing that's coming down the pipe for people that do get into multi-floor properties and want their properties to control a better alignment of their property. Um, the last kind of new thing coming um, in the next release is the ability to lock your alignment. There are lots of implications of this, but basically what you're telling us is that I've aligned it. Um, I don't want you guys touching it. The orientation, the aspect ratio is right. Um, and we're going to go forward. And that allows me to go do some things to the property and the data while you're drafting it for us. So there's some new thing, new tools coming with reference lines and floor underlays and locking alignments that will really help set the user up for preparing data to go into the iGUIDE portal for drafting into a DWG file uh, to give you the output that you want in this remodeling space. So at this time, I'm going to introduce Hope and Hope is from our drafting team. I'm gonna stop sharing now. And Hope is gonna take it from there and, and pretend, hey, I've got this new output from our, our iGUIDE portal and uh, Hope, I'm gonna pass it over to you to show intro to you on all the things we can do with the output from the iGUIDE and go from there. Awesome, thanks Rob. Um, so I am part of the drafting team. Uh, I mostly work with DWG since the beginning. So I'm gonna show you uh, a couple of outputs. I'm gonna show you our DXF output um, that's the one that's automatically created anytime you get an iGUIDE. Uh, once the iGUIDE is published to you, then you automatically have a DXF included. So what does that look like and how is that different from our DWGs? Um, I'll be going through a DWG, standard and premium. Um, and then I'm going to show you some new stuff and, and what that's going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, just give me one moment here. Rob, if you can let me know that you can see my screen. Yeah, we're good. Awesome. All right, so here we have our uh, basic DXFs, um, just, as, just from one property. So we have the main floor and the second floor. So I'm just gonna kind of go into the specifics of each of these outputs um, and kind of what might be useful to you uh, to know um, as you're using them. So our DXF uh, standard output is in metric units. So it, it comes out in millimeters. Um, you'll see that the point cloud is also included, and that's on its own layer. So it's on layer P. Um, so if I were to, you know, turn off all of them. You can see that's the point cloud that was registered from when you shot the property. Um, and this is pretty useful. This is what we as drafters go off of. So however uh, our drafters have aligned it, that's how it's gonna come into our DWG. And that's kind of what we're gonna reference is really the, the point cloud data of it. And you can see here, there's very simplified layers when it comes to the, the DXF. Um, you'll see that, um, that everything is kind of on their own layer. So like walls are on their own layer. There is a half wall layer that comes included with it. However, ledges, columns, uh, and stairs are really on their own structural layer. Um, so you can see here, it doesn't really divide a whole bunch. These are really simplified layers. So structural layer is really uh, a couple of things there. We do have a half wall layer, wall layers, windows, doors. Um, and objects, which is uh, something else to know. All the objects, so like our countertops that we've drafted or our premium objects, um, like toilets or, or any sinks, those are all gonna be on the objects layer. Again, it's very simplified. It's not to any specialty equipment or plumbing. Um, it's just one object layer. What the DXF is really useful for um, is it's instantly available once your iGUIDE is completed. And it's almost, you can use it as a placeholder. You know, when you're doing these construction drawings and you wanna get that all organized, this can be really good to place as a, a placeholder. So you know how big your uh, DWG is really gonna come out. And you can always use your DXF uh, for your point cloud. If you wanna always reference back to your point cloud, the DXF is always gonna have that. So you can pop that into your DWGs. 
So I'm going to move along and I'm going to go to our DWG. I'm going to go and talk about our standard DWG. Um, so with this, our, our DX, uh, sorry, our DWGs, actually, we'll talk about the, uh, the premium version of, of, of the DXF. Sorry about that. So um, with the DXF premium, um, the standard, you're really just getting the walls, doors, um, and you're not getting objects. So just remember that with the DXF, when you're ordering a premium, you get just get the extra objects, and that's really what's different about it. So when you get the DWG uh, standard, again, you're getting a really simplified uh, version, much like the DXF standard, except the you're going to notice that all the layers are now sorted into AIA, uh, which is really the American Institute of Architects layer standards. And this is really helpful because um, now you have more specific of the actual layers. So you're gonna actually have a layer for your columns, your walls, your stairs are gonna be on their own layer. So it's really dividing it more uh, specifically. So you can really control what you wanna look, like, look at. So turn layers on and off. Wall thicknesses are represented at half an inch. So you'll see here uh, with your DXFs, you might have noticed that when you're measuring on CAD that they might get some really small fractions. Whereas on your DWGs, we're gonna measure to the nearest quarter of an inch. That's really the smallest you're gonna get it is within a quarter of an inch. Um, and then the walls are to the nearest half inch intervals. And that's really um, just because of construction standards. So, you know, you got your typical four and a half inch walls. So we can measure to four and a half inch. Of course, the DWG as it is right now, we are going to the point cloud. So if your point cloud shows us that there is a two inch wall, we're gonna set it at two inches, um, whether, you know, it may be four and a half inches for construction purposes, but as it is right now, we are going to the point cloud as our reference point. Uh, so we're not making those assumptions for you. It's whatever was captured with the laser is what we're going to show. So no construction assumptions um, as of right now on either the standard or the premium. So the door representations, we have all the door representations similar to our eye guide. So any door uh, types that you see in our eye guide, we have a similar door uh, object in our, in our DWGs. Windows are represented with uh, a specific block. They are just a representation of the location of where they are in the eye guide. And stairs are also a representation. So it's kind of nice about the, the DWGs um, is that they are actually vertically aligned. So what that means is that once you put them in um, AutoCAD, then they're actually vertically aligned um, by the stairs or any open spaces, which is really nice. Once you kind of insert them or X-reference them, you're gonna notice as soon as you X-reference them that they're right on top of each other. So you know the, how the, we vertically aligned them when as we're drafting them. Stairs are mostly representational because they show you where they start and where they finish. I just want you guys to note that they don't actually um, note how many steps there are in the stairs. It is just a representation of where they start and where they finish. You'll also notice that there's the break line. So the break line is typically at four feet. Um, that might change depending on what your eye guide shows. If it shows a little bit more of the stair, then we might change that break line um, to be a little bit higher or a little bit lower. We also have different layers for, again, structural items like columns, uh, fireplaces are shown with a typical ledge line and then um, an annotation to note where that we're representation, representing um, fireplaces. And when it comes to premium, as you'll note here, you're going to get those labels. Uh, that's something that doesn't come with the DXF. Um, DWGs really include those labels. So we have your actual uh, room areas, uh, room labels, and your ceiling heights. So the areas are gonna be whatever project units you've set to, uh, square feet or millimeter or meter squared. And then your ceiling height is either gonna be in 
uh, feet and in inches, or it's going to be in meters. And the same with your dimensions. Uh, dimensions are set, imperial are going to be feet and in inches, and then if it's metric, then they're going to be in millimeters. So Hope, there was a question from the audience about um, if they were to align the scans, maybe they measure it at two inches, but they, for whatever reason, they want them at four. If they align them and, and put that gap in there, would we draft it at four and a half inches today? Is this like a locked alignment if they were no. to? Today, like, let's just say they did it today without new tools coming. Without the new tools coming, however, our drafters have aligned it. So they are really aligning it, uh, you know, door to door, each room kind of piecing it together. If that laser um, shows us that it's a really small wall right now, um, just of how we've pieced it together on our end, then we are going to show a smaller wall. Um, stay tuned for the updates later on of our, uh, you know, 1.2 version. Okay. Um, which might be a great segue. Yes. So I'm going to move on to our 1.2 version. So I'll show you what a standard looks like here. Um, and as you can see, I have um, both the second floor and the main floor right on top. So I've actually X referenced the second floor on top of this. So you can see here that the exterior walls are aligned perfectly. Um, and then the stairs are aligned. So the stairs are kind of drafted on one as our end. Um, so they're perfectly aligned, start and finish. So if I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So we, uh, in the new updates, What's different about it is that we're going to have this AEC assumptions that you can select. And what this means is that we're going to ensure that we conform to North American industry standards of measurements, including standardized wall thicknesses. So a you know, default four and a half uh, thickness for interior walls, um, and then floor to floor alignment with some assumptions being made in order for the exterior walls to align. That is, if we have the data from uh, outside, if you have panoramas showing us the exterior and we can tell that it is flush, we are going to make some assumptions of the wall thicknesses here so that the exterior walls actually are flush. And then for the interior, um, you're not, we're not going to put it to those two inches or even like four inches or five inches. We're going to default it to standard uh, wall type. So five and a half, um, maybe a six inch plumbing wall, um, those types of things. So those are the assumptions that we're going to make in this 1.2 standard. Um, if you click that AC assumptions, if you don't do it, we're going to default to, we you know, whatever the laser shows us, we're going to put in that size. But the AC assumptions is a, a really nice tool for us to get you those standard sizes and for everything to really start aligning uh, really nice when it comes to construction standards. Um, something else uh, that's going to impact this is the locked alignment for when operators select that. Basically, we are going to draft as is. So whatever you have aligned it to um, in your point cloud, we are just going to draft as is. If you haven't uh, made your walls, you know, four and a half inches um, or close to, um, then we're just going to default to whatever we see. And uh, that goes for vertical alignment as well. You're also going to notice our new window types, which is uh, really exciting. It's kind of a new object for us. And I will say there is going to be more coming with Windows. So keep an eye out for that. But for right now, they're a bit more of a nicer object. You get a nice, uh, nice ledge out of it. And then those windows are going to default to one inch increments. Same with our doors. Our doors are defaulted to um, two inch increments. So two foot six door, two foot eight, typical sizes that you would see when you order. And then I'm just going to show this office um, floor plan. Because what's different about this is that we also have a curtain wall. So our curtain walls and our windows are now two different things. They're going to be on two different layers. 
your curtain wall is going to be part of your wall layer um, because it is a wall system, but we can actually see it looks a little bit different, a little bit nicer than the windows, and we can provide mullions. So we can divide those window panels within the curtain wall um, to help you locate those, um, those areas, those mullions. So if you have to build off of it, it's kind of really clear for you guys to notice that. Um, and our dimensions are are the same. We're measuring to the nearest quarter of an inch. Our wall thicknesses are still to the nearest half an inch, but again, we're gonna standardize them to the um, construction standards um, that you typically you know, use. Um, and then, yeah, just with that AEC selection, we're gonna make the assumptions for you and try to get walls to the nearest um, typical wall thicknesses for you guys. So there, there was a question or comment from the field about assumptions and I, and it's as plain as if you, if you don't check it, then we're going to just model it as we do the way we do it today. And if you do check it, it means we're going to draft things to four and a half inch walls, regardless of the, what the scan date is telling us, because we've had a lot of feedback saying, Hey, they built that wall. It should have been three and a half, but it's actually four and a half. And I don't care what the measurements say, just draw it as a four and a half. So we're going to, that'll be, those will be some options and check boxes that are going to be coming on the portal when you order the DWG file. Yeah, your, your uh, floors are still going to be vertically aligned. Um, it's just in the, if you AC assumption, you know, your walls, exterior walls in specific are going to be a nicer, nicely aligned because you're going to get that flush uh, wall floor to floor, which is kind of nice because we're making those assumptions for you. Um, and something to note with the um, the standard versus premium is that there's with the premium, you also get room boundaries, which is kind of nice in addition to all these room labels. Um, the, the, it is off by default whenever you open up your DWG, you can see each room has its own room boundary. And this is really great for if you're doing calculations um, on certain things and you wanna know the room area, um, that is also part of the premium. So that's kind of it for me in showing the, the nuances of each plan. Um, Philip, so I don't know. If there are a couple of questions that came in with some pretty detailed descriptions. I think we'll try and answer those, but for the for the sake of keeping on time, we're, we're going to get everyone's questions answered, but I'm going to just not be able to do these two right now for the interest of getting through um, what we had planned for today, and, and we'll, we'll get through that. So hope that that was great and a great overview of the current state of the DWG files and what's coming in 1.2. Uh, there'll obviously be some a, a second follow-up one to this when we've got the interface on the portal uh, completed to be ordering these the way you want with assumptions or without assumptions. And then, um, so at this point, you know, people are taking their as-built drawings and they're going through, they're, they're finishing up there. That's kind of the end of the uh, I guide output process, whether you're, you know, you might be using the 3D tour for your visual purposes for interior design or capital planning or whatever, and using the DWG and the 3D environment together. But in regards to the next step of obviously reusing the CAD data, uh, we've, we've sent out an invitation to um, fill up and Philip, I, th I think we're going to now move into you and, and introduce introduce everyone into Chief Architect and how uh, a product like yours will then consume that DWG file and, and carry on with the remodeling process. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. And thank you, Hope, as well. And thank you for everyone for joining us. Can you guys see my screen all right? Yes. All right, perfect. Let me move the Zoom controls out of the way here. So my name is Philip and I am with Chief Architect Software. And for those of you who might be a little bit unfamiliar with Chief Architect Software, Chief Architect is 3D home design software that's used by remodelers, builders, general contractors, architects, kitchen and bath designers, really anyone that has a hand in the residential construction industry. And it's used to create a detailed floor plan, elevations, materials list schedules, layouts, as well as 3D renderings to clients to help you um, sell the job to them. 
And what I'm going to show is how you can take the output from Planetar, in this case, the um, DWG file that they produce, and then bring it into Chief Architect to create a 3D version of the as-built plan, and then continue your design and sales process to create a remodeled version of the plan that you can use to produce the layouts and produce 3D renderings to help the client visualize the design and keep them moving forward. So to reiterate, we're gonna go from the, TW, the DWG file to a 3D Chief Architect file. And just a sneak peek of uh, what the end project will be is we will have the as-built plan and the scenario we're gonna lay out is the client's doing an addition to make space for a larger kitchen and a larger dining area. So that getting started, I will switch over to Chief here. And I have a DWG file on my computer that Rob sent over um, the other day. So I'm going to drag and drop it into Chief. And when you do that, it's going to open up this import drawing assistant. I'll go ahead and click on next and make my way through the wizard. It's going to ask you a few basic questions. Where on the computer is the file? What do you want to do about CAD lines that uh, have shared endpoints? What do you want to do about CAD blocks? If your DWG file is from a surveyor, like a terrain file with elevation data, you can bring that into program and have it automatically recreate your terrain and elevation data. Not showing that today, but that is an option. What do you want to do with the layer names that you're importing? What unit of measurements are you bringing in? And then we will complete that. So here I have that file in Chief Architect. And Chief Architect is a layer-based program. On the right-hand side, you can see my active layer display options. And as I click on a layer, such as this layer for the wall, you can see that layer over in the active layer display options. Over at the top right here is what we call layer sets, which allow you to turn off groups of layers and turn them on. And it also changes the appearance of layers as you switch between them. So before I convert the 2D CAD lines into a chief architect file, what I like to do is take a look at the CAD lines for the walls, doors, and windows, and just make sure they're in a good state for doing the conversion. So what I like to do is switch from this working layer set to the all layers off working set, and then just go to the walls layer, turn them on, do a quick look and make sure that they are in good shape and that there's no missing lines or anything like that. Um, the file I received from you guys looked really, really good, a lot better than a lot of other files I received from people, and it, overall it's in pretty good shape. So the wall layers look good there. Next, I'll look at the windows layer, which I know is this one. And I'm going to click on one of these objects you see. And it might be hard to tell, but in the bottom left-hand corner, it says CAD block instance. And in Chief Architect, when we eventually do the CAD to line conversion, we need to see the raw CAD lines and not a CAD block. So I will just marquee select those CAD blocks and there's a button there to explode them. Now, if I click on them and you look in the bottom left-hand corner, we have access to the individual CAD lines. And then we'll do the same thing with the doors. We will just marquee select them and then block them there we have the individual CAD lines. And then I'll switch back over to my working layer set. And then we're ready to do the conversion. So to do the conversion, you go up to CAD, CAD to walls. And what this conversion does is it looks at the 2D lines for your walls, windows, and doors. And it converts those into kind of the shell of the design. It's not going to convert things like cabinets and stairs and so forth, but those can be added later if you want to using the dynamic tool through the software. So what we're doing in this convert CAD to walls dialog is we're telling the program what layers in this line drawing are the layers for the walls, doors, and windows. So we'll go to the walls and tell it that this A wall layer is the right one. We'll do the same thing with the windows and then the same thing with the doors. Now down here, we have different wall types that we can specify that we're gonna be using. You can see that I'm using our first wall type is one called siding six plank. That's essentially gonna have a two by six drywall, um, OSB and siding, and then interior four wall, drywall, two by four drywall. And how this magic works is the program is looking at 
the lines for your walls and is measuring how um, how thick they are, the distance between those two lines, and then trying to match it up with the appropriate wall type. So now that I've got that set, I will go ahead and click on OK. And you can see that the view on my screen changes there. And if we take a 3D view, go by going up to the camera tools at the top, there is an option for a perspective floor overview. I like to use this one because it has the roof and ceiling removed intentionally so you can look into the design and see what you have going on. Now, in Chief Architect, there are a lot of automated building tools. You'll notice that I have auto rebuild foundations turned on, so it built a foundation underneath my exterior walls. If we come up to this drop down, I can switch to a 3D framing view. I have auto build framing turned on, so it's going to build our framing based on the default settings I've configured. You'll notice that there's roof settings. I had auto rebuild roofs on, so it built them. Um, and if we go back to the camera view layer set, we can see that we've got a pretty good start to the model. At this point, if you wanted to go up to the cabinetry tools and design the as-built kitchen, um, you could do that. For the sake of time in our demo today, I'm not going to design the kitchen. But just as a side note, I do have a more fleshed out version of this as-built plan where I have built a small kitchen representing the as-built kitchen. So from here, we can take this 3D view, put it side by side with our floor plan view. And then what you typically do now is you save a copy of this file, call it the remodeled version, and then continue working on the remodeled project for the client. So you have two files you're working with, the as-built version and the remodeled version. So I'll just demo that real quick. File, save as, call it remodel, save. Notice that my name changes up there. And then from here, I could do things like select this wall, drag it down to make space for the addition, go up to the door tool, add in a sliding door where it might go in the, into the addition, and just continue the design process until I have the completed or modeled plan in place. So in the essence of time, I am going to exit out of this version of the plan and I'm going to open up a completed version of the remodeled plan. So here we are in that completed version. You will notice that I have the full kitchen here, the full dining area, and that there are new doors and windows throughout the space. Up at the top, I can go to this drop down and switch to uh, what you see here called floor plan shell. And this might be just a simple example of a more detailed type of view that you might create uh, for contractors, maybe your permitting department, or maybe to more easily communicate information about the project. You'll notice that this has dimensions going along the side, going to center lines of where new doors and windows will, will be going in. I have a dimension for the extension that we're adding, a little polyline with a, um, a hash going through it, showing the amount of square feet that we're adding, just some simple notes that correlate to the call outs and um, the completed kitchen and a 3D camera in place. Now, one of the cool things you can do is you can have this remodeled plan and you can have the as-built plan and you can overlay the two different plans on top of each other so you can see exactly where these changes are going on. So you can toggle that on and off. I already have it set up just by using the F9 key on my keyboard. You can see that wall that was in the as-built plan along with the text note showing that and the as-built kitchen that I had drawn out in the more fleshed out remodeled version of the plan. If I double click on this 3D camera, it will open up a 3D view of the final kitchen that we designed for the end client. Really easy to navigate around it. And that 3D overview or reference as you might hear me call it also works in both your 2D views and your 3D views. You can turn that on with the F9 key. So, here you can see where the as-built plan previously was, where that wall ended, where the proposed wall and addition is going to go in. You can also see kind of this ghost outline as to where the existing kitchen was located and how we're going to be expanding this space in this scenario for the client. So super easy to turn that on and off. This referencing also works the other way around in that you can be in the as-built plan. So you can have that as-built plan open and then be referencing the remodeled plan. So I'll just show quickly what that looks like before I turn it back over to Rob. So I have this just in images, just to keep it simple. 
So here we have the as-built plan. This would be the plan that you have open. It shows the structure as it exists today in the real world with the kitchen as it exists today. You've created a copy of the plan, done your remodeling work, and now your as-built plan is referencing the remodeled plan to show the client where the existing kitchen ends. You can create a much larger kitchen space. And also if you reorientate the island, you'd have a better area for entertaining as well as a larger dining area. You can switch gears and show the client then what the reference plan might look like, or excuse me, what the remodeled plan might look like, referencing the as-built plan to give them an idea of material selections and design options, such as a waterfall or pendants and so forth, and then show them what the final completed design would look like. And if you need to go a step further, you could create photorealistic renders to help them see even more detail about the design. So to reiterate, we went from the 2D DWG file that uh, Rob and Planetar provided and converted it into a chief architect file to help the client visualize design options, as well as create uh, materials that you might need for schedules, elevations, materials list, um, layouts, and more. With that, I am going to pause just for a second and see if there's any questions from my end that might have come in. There was one about DXF files. So I, I know it's something we haven't tried. Um, mm -hmm. That's something we can kind of regroup with after. Um, obviously the the layer naming and the D and the lines um, made it really easy for you to bring them in at the DWG level. Yeah. Um, it's just somebody asking about DXF import and that's something we were going to take offline with you afterwards. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I see that there's another question there asking, how does it know the interior wall height example, eight foot or nine foot? So that's something that I have to tell the program ahead of time. Hey, these are the ceiling heights that I'm in that I'm going to be using. And then when you do the conversion, it will build to that ceiling height. So that's kind of set up with the template plan I use ahead of time. There's a question of how are the chief architect file to be exported? To be exported. So you can export a chief architect file. If you need to bring it back into AutoCAD or any other programs, you can as like a DWG file. But from here, I think a lot of people continue their design process and creating a final layout for their construction documents, framing views, um, elevations with dimensions, um, framing details and things like that. Okay. So really, I mean, the the one advantage based on the workflow we've shown today is that if you've got a clean, clean, organized, corrected, let's say DWG file and bringing that in, um, it's a pretty novice level user to be able to convert that into kind of like a 3D property. Correct. Yeah. The most important thing is having a good quality DWG file. And the DWG file that you provided me, Rob, is is was really good. It's much better than a lot of DWG files that that make their way to my uh, to my desk. So I appreciate you guys having a clean file for us to work with. And there are two versions of your software, if I understand correctly. There is a, a free one and a pro version. Are we seeing the pro version today? So what I was showing today is Chief Architect Premier, and this is the version that's used by people within the residential construction industry. Okay. And that, that obviously, obviously supports the DWG import. Correct. Yep. Yep. The chief architect premier will do that DWG CAD to walls. You can also import the DWG and then just go up into the program and use the raw tools for the walls, doors, and windows and trace over it and then uh, recreate the design that way. But if you have a good DWG file, the CAD to walls conversion is a great starting point for getting your file converted to a 3D model. So if if um, one of the things we showed you earlier and it showed everyone earlier is this new functionality coming of aligning floor to floor and that if we had given you two DWG files of the main floor and a second floor, is that something you could handle where you import them as aligned and then be able to build off of both of those? Um, I believe so. If I go back to the program real quick here, up at the top of the screen, there are little indicators for your floor levels. Okay. And if I go up one floor, this is the attic floor. I'll go back down, turn off the referencing, and I can build a new floor, um, go to the floor tools, build new floor. And probably what I would do is start with a blank new floor plan, click on okay. 
it's going to ask you how high do you want your ceilings? What type of molding style do you want? What do you want your floor finish to be and things like that? I'll just go ahead and click on OK. But now you'll notice that I have a blank canvas. And from here, you could bring the second floor of that CAD file in. And then pressing that F9 key, the referencing works a couple of ways in that you can reference external files or you can reference the file that you're working in just see different floor levels. And what you're referencing is based on layers. So you can turn on and off whatever you want to see displayed at any point in time. So you could get that CAD file aligned to the second floor with the first floor and then do that CAD to walls conversion again. Okay. That's pretty easy. Um, I think, thank you, Phil. Thank you for showing how that process continues from the as built. And uh, I think you've, that your products are, are showing a great, um, a lot of horsepower to just be able to get to that remodeling phase quite quickly. Yeah. Thanks for bringing us in today, Rob. This was a, this was a good educational uh, process for both of us, I think. Yeah. And, and hope I do have a couple other questions for you um, about, and it came in from the field and I just wanted to think about it and process it before I asked was, there was a question about if we're not making assumptions, so if we're not doing the four and a half inch walls thing, um, what are windows and doors currently being rounded to? They're being rounded to the nearest inch. Okay. Yep. So that's something where we would draft them to the nearest inch on our side. And if they were to spit that out, they could then, if they had a disto device or a tape measure, they could always scale it to that accordingly. Okay. That I just want that was a question that came in that I just wanted clarity on because making assumptions on a making current construction standard assumptions on a hundred year old building is going to create problems, right? So yeah, it's not sure. it's, it's not going to be binary. It's not we're doing these on all the files. You are going to have the choice of when you want what files you want or if you ever want those assumptions applied. So we have uh, quite a few customers that have reached out to us um, in the last eight months, kind of since this has been live for us that have asked for, you know, we don't care the current conditions of the property. We kind of, yes, the wall locations and what have you are critical, but just draw everything at four and a half. So again, different industries, different customer requirements, and it's just one of the pieces of functionality that we're putting in there. Um, Philip, just so that I understood, there was a question that came in about export options. You said you could export as a DWG. Is that correct? Yeah. So if you needed to work in another third party program, um, you could from here. But a lot of people just continue working on their design process in chief. Um, I didn't show this by real, real quick. You can go up to this button here. It says send a layout. Uh, I'll click on yes. I want to save those settings. Click on OK. And you can create a more formal construction construction style document that you might need to see for permits. So a lot of people just continue working in Chief Architect to get their final uh, design and documentation complete. Okay. So if we, okay, uh, I'm not gonna throw that curveball at you. Um, <laughs> are there any other questions from the field or comments from the, the people that have shown up? This has been, a, again, a really, new venture for us in terms of having a, a, a company like uh, Chief Architect consume our output. And it really showed the, the, the process of capture, get to an as-built, get it into a DWG that, that can be consumed by a, a part, third party product like Chief Architect and continue your journey and, and allow you to save a lot of time rather than redrawing from a PDF file or redrawing from points. But, you know, everyone's got their own um, set of deployment rules. And hopefully you've seen today the, the continued growth that we're going to be having in this DWG space. Uh, we've done really well over the last eight or nine months evolving the DWG one output that we've gotten. This um, new step for us, this 1.2, and, and all the things that Hope showed with the new windows and some other new things that are coming into that format. Um, hopefully, you know, you're gonna conti uh, continue uh, using our product that way. So two other questions have come in. Hope had mentioned doors drawn at two inch increments previously. Um, Hope, how do you wanna answer that? Yes, so doors, um... 
they're the windows are drawn at one inch increments and the doors are two are at two. So uh two foot six door, two foot eight door, or uh three foot door. We really try to match them as close to the point cloud as we can. Um, so that's the what the drafters are doing on our end. Um for exact measurements, um we're not there yet for doing anything smaller than two inch increments right now, uh, but please keep giving back your feedback. If this is something that you guys really want to see uh, more smaller increments. Uh, and if uh, you know enough people ask, you know, we'll, we'll do, we can do some stuff on our back end uh, to make this uh, a problem that we get to. Okay. Thank you. Hopefully Tim, that answered your question. Assumptions right now are, are not in the product. We're showing you what's coming. So that's what we're delivering today. Um, Jared, I hopefully, you know, if you go back and listen to this recording, Jared, you, you made a comment in here about how to talk to builders. Builders are trying to get um, to the point where Philip showed with the proof of concept 3D with some interior design with the standards, they're trying to get to that point as early in the process as possible. And it's really important that, that you start to visualize that getting to this point of the potential addition uh, map or the new drawing for, the, for whatever the proposed construction new design is, getting to this point is, getting to that point is painful for a lot of construction contractors, general contractors, design build companies. The amount of time they're spending in the field measuring, the amount of time they're redrafting properties, it's a big haul. So some of the things we've shown you today, you know, going out and saying, hey, there are tools available that you can scan your property and get to this point very quickly, very accurately um, and at scale. So it's something I appreciate your comment. And hopefully this was just a general overview to get us started that you start to see the journey that they're going through today, that without a tool like Chief Architect, without a DWG file, without a, a capture device like the Planix Pro, they're spending not hours, but they're spending days and weeks getting to that point. And with these tools, they're giving themselves a competitive advantage, being able to take on more projects, maybe punch above their weight is what I call it, and take on bigger projects because they have the right tools in place to do to quote properly and and align with the customers in a much earlier phase of the sales process. So if you'd like more information on that, you can please reach out to me uh, on the side. Um, we can do that. Uh, Jerry, is this process for architects versus something just providing floor plans? Absolutely, Jerry. It's very different in that um, real estate agents are just looking for floor plans. They're just looking for what, what are the overall square footage calculations, the area calculations, basically a summary of the property. This vertical or this AEC vertical that we're in, people want to do more with the same information. They want to get into remodeling that house, not just selling it. So we're using the Planix the same, in the same capture capacity, but we're using the data from a 3D scaled perspective, not just as a navigable floor plan, the way a real estate agent would. Um, Rom, I'll take your question offline regarding the DXF and DWG. It's it's quite involved, um, but there should be, there. it's not, it is very likely that there are subtle differences between the DXF and the DWG based on some different redrafting tools that we're doing. So we'll definitely um, address that afterwards. So this was an overview of the process. And um, I, what we wanted to emphasize today, if there are any other questions that come in, I'll, I'll, um, I'll reach out to everybody. But we wanted to give an overview of this space because we have some people on this call that are chief architect uh, customers that wanted to know more about the CAD to walls uh, functionality that Philip demonstrated because they recognize by shooting with the Planix Pro and getting to that point much earlier, they're creating a, an alignment with their customer earlier and getting quicker buy-in. And that's what it's all about in the pre-construction phase. So we wanted to give you this overview of, you may have heard DWG, you may have seen it on the price calculator or our outputs or things like that, but the DWG is just an exchange system of 
how do we take the property property that we captured, create as built drawings, which you need for permits. So those construction contractors need this information to go for building permits. And then how can we reuse that without reinventing the wheel with products like Chief Architect to do design proposals? So um, I'm going to stop it there. Philip, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciated your input and sharing just how easy it is to, to go into that remodeling phase and do it quickly and accurately. I think that's a, a word we haven't used today uh, is being able to retain that accuracy without redrawing and things like that, which creates more errors. And Hope, thank you very much. Uh, we're excited about 1.2 and what it's going to mean uh, to all of our users uh, currently in this space. So um, thanks everyone for coming and we appreciate your input. And if there's been any other questions come in uh, regarding Chief Architect, we'll make sure Philip gets those and I'll get back to everyone uh, individually on some of the other things. So um, I'm going to just, well, I won't wrap it up. There's been a couple of good questions really come in. Are, is the new AEC assumptions going to apply to commercial as well as residential? Yeah, that'll apply to everything. So if you hit make assumptions, you can have us apply the same rules that we just talked about to any property. It could be for insurance, it could be commercial, it could be real estate. If you ask for a DWG file and you want assumptions, that's what you're going to get. Okay, so um, that's it. Thanks everyone for coming. We had a um, record turnout in a way. And um, hopefully everybody got something out of it and we will catch up with everyone soon. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, thanks, Philip. Thanks, Hope. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.